And it's really important to notice something called the bounce rate, which is when people are going to your site, how quickly are they leaving it? How quickly are they giving up? Because you can be the best marketing person in the world, but if your website isn't converting those potential clients into actual clients, we have a big problem. You're listening to the Massage Boss Podcast, the place to uncover the tips, tactics, and strategies necessary to create a thriving massage business and grow to the next level. Here's your host, DJ Turner. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Massage Boss Podcast. As we wind down here towards the end of the year, I wanted to do something a little bit different and have a chance to reflect on some moments and some things that I think are really helpful. So if you've been listening for a while, you should know that I have a new book, an ebook coming out soon, the beginning of next year, The 90 Day Therapist, where I sat down with successful spa owners, massage therapists, industry leaders, and I asked them a series of questions about what they would do if they had to rebuild their business. So in this episode, you're going to be hearing excerpts from the audio version of this book originally recorded as part of the 2020 Massage Marketing and Growth Summit. And each one of these speakers was asked the same questions. In this episode, you're going to hear the answer to this specific question. Given your experience, what mistakes do you commonly see massage therapists making when they're trying to grow their business? And so my goal for this episode is for you to listen to these common mistakes, see if you can identify the ones that you're making yourself and learn from these speakers about how you can fix them as you head into the new year. So our first guest you're going to be hearing from is Rebecca Brumfield. Now, Rebecca is the owner of Vita Pura Spa in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as well as the founder of Badass Body Workers, an all-female community, especially for bodywork solopreneurs and passionate leaders in the wellness industry who are ambitious, driven, and make no excuses to create their dream business. Now, she has a passion for entrepreneurship and especially integrated through empowering women through social media and locally women-owned businesses. I think the word mistake is very objective depending on the journey of the therapist and where they are at in their business. But the most common thing that I see, well, business owners, this happened with me. I blindly trusted somebody and I did not have a contract signed right from the get go because the first couple of months were supposed to be a trial period. Have things written down, have your policies and procedures written down, whether it be for your staff, for your managers, whether it be for your clients, have a cancellation policy have everything written down because there's a reason why franchises are taking over this industry. It's because they have their shit together. They have structure, they have policies, they have procedures, they have protocols. Most small businesses don't. Most small businesses don't even answer their phone. And I refer out my phone calls to a calling service, which is great, but we just spin our wheels as small business owners. We don't have structure. And that's the thing that lacks most in running any business, but in this one, especially because we are healers or facilitator of healers or healing, we tend to give everyone benefit of the doubt and be like, okay, well, at the end of the day, you know, 30 cancellations that year or no shows just cost you $8,000. So have policies in place. I actually, I do my market research in my area. I take what everyone else is doing. If everyone else is discounting their services, I raise my rates. If everyone else is doing X, Y, Z, I do the opposite because I strive to be different. I don't even have the same products at my facility that other spas have here in my town because I want to be different and that really pays off and it really shows. You know, I don't believe in discounting, at least not without a purpose. I think discounting with packages and having an incentive or gift with purchase is great. I think blindly discounting and pulling a number out of your ass because everyone else is doing it and running Groupons with absolutely zero game plan on how to follow up and how to really monetize that is a huge mistake. I think it's the lazy way out to answer your email that you sent me this morning, Daryl. And I think people do that because not because they're desperate, but because we only know what we're exposed to. And online, all the people are like, just discount your services. Well, no, we only know what we're exposed to. So expose yourself to different things, guys. Go to the best business advice that I receive from people or people who are not in our industry. I go to business meetings all the time. I go to events with professionals that have nothing to do with massage therapy. And I learn so much from reading books from business owners and autobiographies from people 
people. Uh, one of the best autobiographies that I read was from the owner of Dogfish Head Brewery up in, uh, in New England. Like I learned so many business skills from reading his autobiography and that has nothing to do with massage therapy. I think your listeners know by now I like beer, but, uh, <laughs> but get out of your comfort zone, surround yourself with people who are not in your industry because that's where you're really going to learn and have a different perspective. And that's where you're really going to succeed is boosting yourself to other industries, to other mindsets, to other uh, people with different expertise who are not in our industry because our industry massage therapy has been stuck for 30, 40 fucking years. We've been stuck. And I think it's time for it to shift and to move forward. And we can't do that if we're still stuck in the past doing the same things we've always done for the past 30 or 40 years. There's a reason why people don't take us seriously as a profession. And it's because we're stuck doing the same shit with zero results. Our next guest you're going to hear from is Rachel Bider, who is no stranger to this podcast. She's been featured actually quite a few times. Rachel's an entrepreneur, educator, speaker, and mentor, as well as the proud owner of Press Modern Massage, a group of award-winning clinical massage studios in the New York area. Now, she's been able to be featured in Forbes, Inc., The Wall Street Journal, Entrepreneur Magazine, ABC News, Refinery29, Women's Health, as well as the U.S. News & World Report. And she's made her career about empowering women to start and grow their own practices via wellness business consulting. Here's her take on what mistakes massage therapists are making and what they can do to fix it. Ooh, so many. The first is having a website that lists too many items or will list a menu with items that have no context, so no pricing. You know, but they'll have a book now button and it's like, well, I don't know what it costs. So I'm not going to click the book now. Your website, it's really important. You can throw on Google Analytics for free. And it's really important to notice something called the bounce rate, which is when people are going to your site, how quickly are they leaving it? How quickly are they giving up? Because you can be the best marketing person in the world, but if your website isn't converting those potential clients into actual clients, we have a big problem. So there are lots of reasons that a website doesn't convert, but I think making sure that you're approaching things from a client perspective rather than just a business perspective. So when I'm a client and I'm looking at something, I want to know, what is it? What does it cost? What does it look like? And how do I book it? If every image on your website is stock, I don't know if you're a creepy guy in a basement somewhere. You know, I don't know if you have a beautiful space. I don't know what your approach is. Use actual photos. It's 2020. We can take photos and upload them in two seconds. Even a cell phone photo is better than nothing in the beginning. But just like get actual photos of your space. Make sure it looks tidy and clean and bright and well lit. Make sure that you have your menu items on the homepage with a price point because that's what clients are looking for. And then make it really, really obvious and easy. It's called a call to action, a very clear, here's the button to book if you want them to book online, or here's the number to call if you want them to call. But don't make people go looking for things because what happens is they get frustrated because they can't find it and then they just go on to the next website. They don't care. So making sure that your website is really, really professional, up to date, you know, if it's been three or four years since you've updated your website, that's too long. The way that the internet works and the way that the pace of things work, you really have to be updating it frequently and making sure that it's mobile friendly so that when people are on their cell phone, it doesn't look like weirdly too small or hard to read. You also really want to have a strong presence on Google Maps, using images, using reviews. Ask everyone you know, hey, you know what? You've had my work before and it would really mean a lot to me if you could just take five seconds leave a five-star review or leave a few words about your experience working with me. It would mean so much to me as a small business. And when people review, review you, actually reply to them, thank them, you know, engage with them and use it as a teaching opportunity to say, check out my Instagram, you know, check out my Facebook, follow along for specials and discounts and thank you so much. The other thing I think people do is they don't price themselves appropriately from the beginning or they haven't raised their prices in years and then they're complaining that they're not making any money and they're overworked. You know, make sure that you are updating your prices pretty regularly. It doesn't have to be every year. It could be every year and a half. But I think every year and a half, every two years, it's time for a price upgrade because you need to keep up with the cost of rent, the economy changing, your skill set changing. And when I think about the kinds of clients that you love working with, I call them red velvet rope clients. Those are the clients who pay really well, they tip really well, they show up on time for their appointment, 
you know, if they accidentally have a no-show or a cancel, they're paying that full fee, which brings me to another point. You have to have a cancellation policy and you have to enforce it. You have to take down credit cards when you're booking. This is super, super important. You have to have good boundaries with your clients. But those red velvet rope policy clients, they're not going to care if you raise your prices by $5. They're thrilled to pay it because they know that you're worth it. And if you're worried about losing clients, like let them go. You know, frankly, they will be replaced with people who are happy to pay your fee. And if you do have to raise prices and you're scared to do it, one thing that's nice to do, rather than grandfathering some people in and everyone's at a different price point, just say, in 30 days, here are the new pricing. And if you'd like to reserve your current pricing, please go ahead and buy as many sessions at the current rate as you'd like. Pre-purchase as many packages, as many sessions as you'd like, and I'll honor that rate. And then when those run out, you're at the higher rate like everyone else. And this works every time. I have not lost customers to this. So I think in the beginning, just make sure that you're pricing yourself appropriately because you cannot offer a discount, like a juicy discount, like $20 off if your price is too low in the first place. The next guest you're going to hear from is Michael Ortiz. Michael Ortiz is a massage therapist and the founder of Massage Customs in Las Vegas, Nevada. And as an aside, Michael's someone that we've been working with for a very long time to send high quality clients to his practice with Facebook ads. The work that he does inside of his practice with his team, with his front desk, is absolutely phenomenal at converting so much of the interested leads into paying clients. It's been an absolute pleasure working with him over the years. Now, Michael originally got into the industry under the influence of his wife. She told him that he was good at massage therapy and that she thinks that he should consider doing it for a career. He had no idea if he was actually going to like it, but ended up falling in love. In this career now, for over 13 years, the first five and a half, he actually started out, like many, doing mobile massage for private clients on the side while still working at a large chain spa. Today, as the owner of Massage Customs, he continues focusing on growing his practice and growing and cultivating the members of his team to build a healthy work environment and a place where they can all flourish as individuals while still maintaining the Massage Customs quality and brand. And he focuses on growing his practice as well as teaching massage therapists high tactical sales strategies so that they can convert more clients into their practice and increase their revenue. Here's what he has to say about some of the biggest mistakes that he's seen over the years working with other massage therapists. And some of the biggest mistakes that they're making is they're doing nothing to market themselves. I think they think that, uh, first off, when you come out of massage school, the people you already know, if they're getting massages, probably already have a massage therapist. And if they're not, just because you're a massage therapist doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be your regular just because they're your friend, right? So I think they think they can coast off of the people that they know already when really they have to take way more action, right? They're just not, they're not using social media. They're not using video. They're not blogging. They're not doing anything to market themselves, but yet they expect to be successful. So if we're talking about people who are on their own or going into uh, to people's homes or have their own private practice. It's everywhere. Nobody markets themselves at all. I know so many massage therapists, I look at their profile, they might put a picture up every once in a while, but I don't know if it's just they don't know what to do or if they're just scared. And honestly, that's not even just a massage therapy problem. That's a business owner problem, period, across the board. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's episode. I wanted to hop on really quickly to ask you a short question. Are you struggling to consistently fill your appointments with word of mouth alone? Maybe you're a one-woman show, or perhaps you're trying to fill your new therapist calendar. Either way, you know that your current efforts are not enough and you're stuck trying to figure out what actually works when it comes to attracting new clients. If this sounds like you, then I've got something that I think will help. Every week, I set aside a few openings on my calendar to sit down one-on-one to chat with therapists and spa owners on the best path for them to scale beyond word of mouth and fill their calendars with high-quality clients. During this call, we'll dive deeper into your business, get clarity on your goals, and help map out an action plan that you can follow within your existing resources. If and only if it makes sense for the both of us, we can also talk about ways that we can formally work together beyond this call and how to get more hands-on help in implementing your action plan. 
sound like something you're interested in? Then head over to lmtgrowth.com slash chat to schedule your free one-on-one strategy call today. Again, that's lmtgrowth.com slash chat to schedule your free one-on-one strategy call today. Now let's go ahead and get back into the episode. Our next clip comes from Sean Kitzman. Sean is the owner of Synergy Movement Therapy and has been a therapist for over 20 years. Since he began practicing in 2000, his passion has been helping amateur, collegiate, and professional athletes stay healthy, recover from injuries, and improve performance. And he's also passionate about helping wellness healthcare professionals pursue their own passion and fill their practices with clients who really value their work. Here's what he had to say about the most common mistakes he sees in the massage industry. Yeah, I think the two things that I could say right off the top of the, you know, my head that most therapists make is that number one, they're very scared to sell clients and retain clients. But interestingly enough, they're willing to spend money to get new clients in. Like I look at that idea of like spending money for client acquisition and you're spending consistently the stream of income. I look at it like, you know, pouring water into a bathtub that has a hole in it. I mean, yeah, sure. You're filling up the bathtub for a little bit. I think they need to get a retention strategy that they're comfortable with because that's the thing, right? Most of these therapists, they don't have a sales background, so they don't understand how to set up a sales process that feels authentic to them. And also they need to be resilient when they first start that sales process because it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable to them and it's probably going to be uncomfortable to their current clients are just kind of like flying in when they want to. And then get out of your office, get away from your sheets, get into your community. The relationships that you build, that one relationship that I had with that running shoe store, man, I made thousands and thousands of dollars off of that one relationship. And all that took was me going into a business that was aligned with my practice. Notice how I I didn't say that I walked into the local hair salon, right? Because obviously that's not a good fit for me. One, two, I'm not a spa person. So if I walk into a spa and go, hey, who wants some movement re-education today? You know, I'm going to fall flat on my face. So you have to get in front of people that align with what you do in your work. The next speaker you're going to hear from is Richard J. Platt, who's also been featured on this podcast before. Richard is a business mindset coach for massage therapists, a clinical hypnotherapist, and published author of the best-selling book, Massage Therapist Success Mindset, Success Principles for the Massage Therapist Entrepreneur. Now, Richard has worked with and been mentored by some of the world's leaders in human growth and potential, such as Bob Proctor, author and featured in the 2006 movie, The Secret, as well as the 2017 documentary, Think and Grow Rich. Richard now utilizes his knowledge and skills to help other massage therapists and practitioners create and set clear goals, which propels them into fulfilling and successful careers. Here's his take on the mistakes that he sees most massage therapists making. The biggest common mistake that I see massage therapists making when they're trying to grow their practice is lack of clarity and lack of preparation for what they're doing. They think that is uh, sometimes just as simple as opening up my own business and I'll just get the clients coming into my doors that way when it's not really how it works. So it's important to have a game plan for starting your business. And like you were saying, those benchmarks of where you're wanting to reach to know that you're on the right track or if you might need to pivot it all slightly with the messaging that you're implementing in your business. And as well, another mistake that I see quite often, uh, there's a lot of mistakes, but I'm just going to outline the main ones that I see. And that's uh, therapists who don't invest in their own professional growth and development. Uh, You know, before you pump money into your business, uh, you should be putting money into your professional growth and development so that you understand where you're taking your business. Uh, So many businesses, so many massage therapists spend a lot of money on their marketing and advertising when they don't even know who it is they're marketing to. Uh, So it's so important that you have a clear understanding of who you are and who you're serving in this industry. So you really need to invest in your professional growth and development. And in turn, it's also going to develop your personal growth and development as well. Um, And that kind of segues into the fact that you need a mentor. Even the mentors have mentors. Coaches have coaches. And you need a mentor in this industry because let's face it, we are not taught business in massage school. In fact, I was chatting with a massage student just the other day, and she had sent me a message asking me if I could look over her 
website because part of their curriculum they were doing was that they had to design kind of a mock website. Uh, I think it was on Wix or Squarespace or something. And so I said, yeah, not a problem. So I went on there and took a look at it. And I came back with her with a list of recommendations of what I would probably, how I would present myself on this website. And she said, none of this is taught to us. Like none of this is just the basic general information that we're being given. And this is a problem. And this is why you have people like me and people like you in this industry who are showing massage therapists, hey, there's a correct way to do this. And you weren't taught this in massage school, but we're going to teach you how to do this here. And I'd probably say as well, another mistake that massage therapists make is being too general. This kind of ties in with the whole niche aspect. They're too general with who they're serving and why, which sets them up for competition. Because realistically, if you're a generalist in this industry, then your competition is more than likely generalist as well. And you should be looking at their rates and wondering, how can I compete with them? But if you have a niche, if you have a, um, a defined target market audience that you're wanting to uh, move toward, then you're not doing the same thing as your competitor. So you can niche in a different way. You can market yourself in a different way that sets you apart because your competitor is not doing the same thing as you. So it really eliminates the competition out of it. And also, finally, um, know your numbers. A lot of massage therapists don't know their financials, Okay. I'm just trying to get out of the sun here. It seems to be shining in my eyes a little bit. Um, yeah, they don't know their numbers. It's, it's one of those things that it's important to have a goal of the number that you're wanting to reach, but understand that what you're charging in your massage practice is going to directly relate to that number you're wanting to earn. So if you have a specific number in mind, you need to understand how to charge your services so that you actually meet that number and not just put a random number into the sky of how much you want to earn and then just randomly charge a price because your competitors are charging it or that you think, yeah, you know, people will pay this price or, you know, this is affordable enough where I can attract people. That is a huge mistake that massage therapists make because they're not tracking that aspect of it and tracking the financials is so important for your business because you have to look at it like this. You're not just wearing the hat of a massage therapist. You're also wearing a hat of a project manager. You're wearing a hat of your bookkeeper. You're wearing the hat of office manager. Sometimes you're cleaner. You know, you're wearing all these different hats and you need to make sure that you understand the processes of the job that you're doing at any given time. So those are probably the biggest mistakes that I see massage therapists make. And finally, the last guest you're going to hear from today is Felicia Brown. Felicia is a licensed massage therapist and the owner of A to Zen, where she has worked with a number of her loyal clients since she began her practice in 1994. She's also the author of seven books, including Every Touch Marketing, Creating Lifetime Clients, Free and Easy Ways to Promote Your Massage, Spa, and Wellness Business, Wisdom of the Stone, The Sunflower Princess, and Sunflower Wisdom. Felicia is also the founder of Balanced Day Spa, a full-service day spa which grew out of her original massage practice. Though she sold this practice in 2005, Felicia continues today to provide training, education, and marketing coaching for massage, spa, and wellness professionals. Here's her take on some of the mistakes that she's seen other therapists making over the years and what they can do to fix them. Well, I think we've talked about a lot of them. The biggest thing I see in general is that, well, it's two things. One will be on the growth side and one will be on the retention side. So on the growth side, the mistake is people forget that the folks that are the closest to them don't actually know what they do. So case in point, um, when I was growing my practice again, ironically, one of my friends called me up and said, hey, Felicia, I was wondering if you could recommend a good massage therapist to me. And I, I was sort of paused and I thought, wow, that's a really odd question since I'm a massage therapist. And so I asked her, I said, well, is there a reason why you didn't want to schedule with me? And she said, oh my gosh, well, I thought you retired from massage when you sold your first spa. And I was like, oh, okay. So what that told me was that even though I see this person about once a month and I talk about work or what have you, she had no idea that I was a massage therapist and that I was taking clients. Kind of funny, right? So I think that's one of the biggest mistakes massage therapists make is that they don't make it known to their friends, family, coworkers, or colleagues, or whoever, anybody that they interact with, that they are a massage therapist and that they are taking new clients and they'd love to see that person or people like them. So I think that's a really big mistake that many people don't make others aware of what they do and that they're available. 
The second thing is on the retention side, and it's simply not connecting with clients in such a way that they A, understand you'd like to see them again, and B, know why it would be beneficial for them to come back. So, you know, I think you can overcome this by simply talking to your clients about their goals and asking them, you know, like, why are you here for massage therapy? What do you want to receive out of this? Are you interested in receiving massage on a regular basis? Just some general questions. And then having a follow-up plan at the end to ensure that that client, if they like your work, comes back. I think that's the two biggest things people struggle with. And the retention is so important. Well, I have several clients like this, but I have a client written about in my other book who has spent more than $100,000 on my business because he's been with me for 25 years and his wife as well. And between them and the clients they referred, and both of them coming in very regularly, has brought in more than $100,000. And that's kind of amazing when you think about it, but it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't good at retention. If I hadn't made a point to ask him to come back again and again and again, I don't think that we would have had that kind of relationship. So it's not that hard, but it seems to be very difficult for a lot of people to make themselves take those kinds of steps. Thanks so much again for listening to today's episode. Now, before we get out of here, if you enjoyed the episode, would you be willing to do me a quick favor? If you got some sort of value out of this episode, would you please be sure to leave a rating and review? This makes all the algorithms go to work and it helps other people just like you find out about the show and get the information that they need to help grow themselves and their own businesses. Plus, it helps me know that you like what's going on here on the podcast. So whatever app, whatever program you're listening to, just head really quickly to the rating section and leave a quick rating and review. So thanks so much again, and I'll catch you on the next one.